wet, miserable end to the river season. There has been some diamonds in the rough since our last video. One session that will stay in my mind for a long, long time is my first ever road session on a small, tiny little stream, trotting red maggot on the centre pin reel. Between me and the newest member of the team, Alex, we had 10 fish over one pound, all roach, a large rud over a pound and a half, and also a perch to over two pound as well. Loving it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I even managed to squeeze in a few little perch sessions on the light lures as well. That's a lovely fish. It's a proper, proper lump, that one. It's a 40 centimetre fish. They've all got beautiful colours in here as well. Unlike this little pip squeak, Ben put all his eggs in one basket and wanted to target that big PB pike that he's been after all winter. And it sure did pay off with only a couple of weeks left of the calendar when he caught this 19 and a half pounder. Well done, mate. Anyway, it's springtime now. Everything's starting to wake up. So let's get out there and catch some tench. Morning guys, welcome to Fanta Fishing. Today you join me in part one of a mini series featuring Tench that I'm gonna be doing called Tinker Tales. The reason why I call it Tinker Tales, uh, it's two part really. I put a little feeler out on my Instagram page and asked people to suggest ideas for a mini series for Tench and Tinker Tales came out a few times. Um, tinker Tinker is the Latin for Tench. Um, so I thought it was a bit of an alliteration and it worked quite well so that's what the series is going to be called and like I said it's a mini series so it's going to be broken down into uh, a couple of different videos uh, exploring a couple of different methods. Today I'm at a gravel pit, part of a club water, it's a brand new uh, ticket for me, never been down here before um, so fishing slightly blind, it is a Saturday morning so there's not a lot of option for me, uh, there's carp anglers everywhere as there is carp featuring this lake um, but it is rumoured to have quite a good um, chance of some tench hits early in the season. So today it's feeder tactics on bite alarms. Um, got reasonably light gear, but I'll talk you through that in a little while. Um, but yeah, it's about half five now. I uh, got down here in the dark, put all my ground bait mix together, got two rods out. Now it's just sit and wait really, but. So it's a nice day. We might even see the sun today, which is a uh, quite a rare occurrence these days. But um, I'll keep you updated on how we get on, and uh, yeah, catch you in a little bit.
first fish of the day. Got to be a bit careful here because there's a really steep drop off in front of this swim. So it's really deep and then it comes really shallow. Hindsight, it would have been better for me to have brought some waders really, but this does feel like a tench. This one tore off out of nowhere, really. Just move this one into the margins because I saw some fish moving about. Well, it's definitely woke up now. <laughs> Perhaps there's a carp. Sorry if there's a lot of wind noise. The wind's hacking across the field behind me. If it is, it feels like not a bad fish at all. That is a tench. Turn him. Oh, it's a nice fish. Come on, baby. Yes, in the net. Get in there. Oh, look at that for the first one of the season. What a fish that is. Right, I'm going to leave you there, mate. Get the unhooking mat ready. Plum, tench. Really happy with that one. Took on two small dendro beamers on a hair. Definitely remember this one. He's got a black mark on his belly there. Another one on the back of his tail. Give him a quick weigh. Five pound, 11 ounce. Great start of the day. Really bad, good spot. One last look at him. We'll take a quick steal and get him back. I'll show you the rig very shortly. Right, so it's early afternoon now. There's been no more action on the rods at all, really. Not seen any fish moving about. So I'm not one to just sit on rods and hope for the best. So I've come down to a different swim, right in the corner of the lake. There's no wind here. It's a little bit where I'm, where I'm sitting, but there's no ripple in the water at all. Definitely, it feels like a different climate. Um, I know tench are extremely sensitive to wind and weather conditions and things, so I'm thinking come down here, two quiet little rods, 
uh, one by uh, a little overhanging tree and one just out on the marginal shelf. Um, maybe able to pick up another one. But I'm probably going to sit around this session out in here and see how we get on really. But um, similar tactics, worms on the hook. I swapped one over to corn, um, but it didn't really change anything. So I'm going to carry on plugging away. If nothing's happened, then I'm going to try some artificial casters shortly um, on the on the hair, just to see if that brings on a bite. But uh, I'm not going to switch around with the bait too much as I'm using worm. Um, most species will pick that up. And then, so it's a case of just finding them, presenting a bait, and catching them. Um, literally, 95% of all fishing, I believe, is location location wrong. It doesn't matter what you're using, what rods you're using, what bait you're using, you're not catching them. So finding them is essential, moving around, you're only going to find them by moving around. So um, I know some people sit on their hands all day and sit behind rods but I just can't do it. Hopefully it pays off, when it does it feels even better. Beginning to think there's a bit of a lost cause staying for the afternoon. I had an aborted take about half an hour ago. So a little reed chuck and a few casters sprinkled over the top. Brought them back into the swim. Uh, it's quite a uh, small snaggy swim here lots of debris lots of bits of branch and that about so i'm gonna to have to play this one a little bit harder than the last one it's a tench just seen it pop up in the water it's not happy also don't want it to take out me other rod On this light gear, they really scrap well. Great fun. Nice clear water, you can see the fish. come down here. I think silhouette of myself with the sun behind me is spooking it slightly. Let's get for the snags. Come on up you come. It's another good fish. Oh yes. There we go. That one, I dare say that one might even be a little bit bigger. Right, let's get the hook, unhooking that sorted. Look lovely just inside of the mouth. See what it weighs. Six pound and twelve ounce. I'm really happy with that one. Give you one last look. Just as the sun is starting on its decline, I managed to pinch another one up. I might push me luck and see if I can get one more. What a beautiful fish! And it just goes to show that if you're not catching somewhere, then move. Right, so it's getting towards the end of the session now. 
Um, temperature is really starting to drop now. Um, so I'm going to give it another 15 minutes or so. One last chuck of the rods um, on the spots. I've seen a few bits of fizzing in the swim, which is good signs. Also, there's leaves and things coming off the bottom. Uh, what that indicates to me is that there's tench grubbing around in amongst all the dying leaves uh, from the autumn and they're just popping up with the gas bubbles uh, to the surface so um, there might be a chance of another one but if not then it's been a brilliant day on a brand new lake to me it's the first time I've ever been here um, and I've had two uh, decent fish but I wanted to take a minute before it gets dark and before I go home just to talk through the setup it really is simplicity anyone can do it and a lot of the components I'm using today uh, are in ready-made form so anyone can go out there purchase these items um, or build them themselves and go and catch some tench so I like to try and keep things light so I'm using the core and all-rounder rod which is uh, 1.25 test curve it's 10 foot in uh, length uh, so anything sort of a, a bit of distance and maybe up the size of that rod but try and keep the test curve of the rod down um, because when you're using light line you've got the bend of the rod as well which is quite forgiving uh, it's a 4000 size axis reel uh, which is front uh, fixed ball reel uh, front drag 6 pound uh, on a filament line all the way through and that's down to a cage style feeder that I'm using today, uh, 45 gram this is, uh, which is one and a half ounce, buffer bead on the top, and then one of the Corum Ready Heli rigs, uh, which you can just feed onto the line like you would a float stop. It has a little section for your hook link to go onto. Hook link I'm using is a 10 pound fluorocarbon hook link down to an all-rounder hook which is a size 10 uh, this one has got uh, artificial casters and maggots on it and I did thread some um, real casters on as well it's important that you use the artificial ones I think because it neutralizes the weight of the bait and I'll show you quickly in the margins uh, if it's not too dark how these will work basically they negate the weight of the hook they enable your bait to waft at the bottom when a, when a tench feeds it will use its pectoral fins and it will blow around all the bait in the swim and there's some really good underwater footage uh, of tench feeding and you'll see all the casters and bits and pieces wafting around um, through, through the different layers of the water and you want your hook bait to be similar to that really uh, if there's any weight or anything that's, that feels dangerous to the tench then they'll just spit it out and it won't be catching it. But one last thing, uh, the hook link I like to fit fish it so it's just touching the feeder you can go shorter if you like if you think you're being done and they're, they're rejecting the bait then you can go shorter the reason I use the 10 pound fluoro is just so it kicks out that bit more it's got a bit more body to it it's not too subtle um, and it avoids tangles basically because we've got a bit of weed that's starting to grow now it's very difficult to know exactly what you're fishing on um, so although not ideal at close range that I've been using it today the heli rig is the best way to know that you're not fishing in amongst weed and your hook bait hasn't been dragged into weed. The issue you've got when you're fishing close is the angle of your line. What you don't want is your angle like this and your bait not presenting properly. To negate this, if you slack off your line slightly then you will be fishing on the bottom. And that's what I've been doing today and it's been working fine. Um, if you haven't got lots of weed then an inline system probably would be better uh, when you're fishing in close uh, with the feeder anyway i'm going to start slowly packing down the gear now um, if i do get something else obviously i'll show you but if not thank you very much for watching the video today i hope you've took something away from it and you're going to go out and target these fish it's early spring there's loads of time to start 
um, fishing for them. You know, today I was fishing for a bite really and managed to get two fish, which is a real result. So get yourself out there, keep your eyes peeled for part two. Part two is going to be waggler fishing for tench, using a centre pin and a float rod. So a little bit different from what we're doing today, but I want to show you different tactics to catch these fish and admire them. They're, they're, they're up there with my favourites, they're up there with perch as my favourite fish. So um, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one guys. Stay happy, healthy, enjoy your fishing. Bye.